In today's interconnected web ecosystem, all communicating parties must ensure secure authentication and data exchange. One popular way is through JSON Web Tokens. It's a proven way of implementing bearer token authentication and securing APIs. In this video, we will examine the key elements that enables us to decode a JWT in .NET. JWTs consist of the header, the payload, and the signature, separated by a dot as you can see in this image. The header includes metadata about the token, such as the key ID, type, and the signing algorithm. Within the payload, there are claims, which are statements about the user or additional data. The signature ensures the JWT's integrity by encoding the header, payload, and a security key. All this information is encoded in Base64 format. So, let's see how we can decode our token. First, we need to install the required Nugget package to get this working. Here we need the system.identity model the tokens.jwt package. Now, after the installation, let's start by creating a new JWT utils class. Let's remove these usings, make it public static, and add the first method, which we will use to get the access token from an external resource. So, let's create a public static async method and name it get access token from identity server. Inside, we create a new token response variable named token response. But for that, we need to install the identity model package. Then, inside the using directive, we create a new client by instantiating the new HTTP client class. Now, we need a discovery document. And we can get it by calling the client's get discovery document async method where we provide a URI address to the duendesoftware.com. If you get an error while fetching the discovery document, we will simply throw an exception with the error property of the discovery document. Otherwise, we get our token response by calling the client's request client credentials token async method and providing a new client credentials token request object as an argument. In this object, we provide an address as a discovery document, document token endpoint, client ID as M2M, client secret as secret and the scope with the API value. Now, if you get an error from the token response, we simply throw an exception by again using the error property. On the other hand, we just return our access token. So, as we said, with this method, we will acquire the token. And to continue, let's create a method to convert it to JWT security token, name it convert JWT string to JWT security token, and add a single parameter. Inside the method, we create an instance 
of a JWT security token handler. And next, we extract the token by using the read JWT token method to read and parse the input JWT string. Finally, we return the token. Once we obtain the token, we can decode it as the next step. But first, we have to create another class. And let's name it decoded token. Here, we will remove these unused namespaces. And let's change this class to a record. And add our required parameters. We can see a lot of different parameters for this record. Now, with this in place, let's get back to the JWT utils class and add another method to decode the JWT. We will make it a static one as well. Return decoded token name it decode JWT and provide a single JWT security token parameter. Inside the method, we will extract essential information from a provided JWT security token. Initially, we capture the key IDs stored within the token's header. Then, the audience data that represents recipients converted to a list. Then we extract claims. And here we will use the SELECT method to convert these claims into a list of tuples containing the claim type and its corresponding value. And let's convert it to list. Finally, we have to return a new decoded token with all the properties. So we need our key ID, also the issuer part, and already extracted audience and claims. To determine the token's expiration, we retrieve the expiration date, valid2. Additionally, we capture the signing algorithm employed for the token's validation, which is signature algorithm. Also, we fetch the raw data directly from the token. We then attempt to gather the subject information, which may sometimes be empty, especially in scenarios like client credentials grants. Furthermore, we retrieve the token's validity start date, capturing the moment the token is considered valid. We also acquire the header and payload in the token's encoded payload. Now we can go to the program class and first get the access token by calling our get access token method. and let's write it down to the console. Next, let's convert it to JWT by calling the convert method and providing the access token as an argument. Also, we are going to print the JWT. Finally, we are going to decode the JWT by calling the decode JWT method and providing a required argument. And of course, we are going to print it down as well. Lastly, we have to fix this by adding the await keyword. So that's it. We can start the app and inspect our results. We can see an initial access token then the converted JWT, and finally a decoded token. So that's it. Please don't forget 
to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.